use. Speaking of alcohol use, let's talk about alcohol toxicity. Ethanol is the alcohol that's in most alcoholic beverages. In the body, ethanol is converted to acetaldehyde by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. Acetaldehyde can be converted to acetic acid by the enzyme acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Acetic acid can then be removed from the body, and this is the normal metabolism of ethanol. If acetaldehyde dehydrogenase is inhibited, for example by a drug known as disulfiram, acetaldehyde can begin to accumulate in the body, which can result in nausea, vomiting, headache, and even hypotension. At one point, disulfiram was actually given to alcoholics with the expectation that they would take it daily in order to deter themselves from drinking alcohol. If they took the drug in the morning, for example, and began drinking alcohol later, they would very soon begin to feel nauseated, they would begin vomiting, headaches, etc. However, this treatment is no longer very common or popular. Another drug known as Femepazole actually works at the first step and inhibits the conversion of ethanol to acetaldehyde in the first place. Methanol, another alcohol, is similarly metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase, but the product from this reaction is formaldehyde and formic acid, which can actually cause significant retinal damage and blindness, as well as causing a metabolic acidosis. Someone who has drank methanol can actually be given ethanol as an antidote, because ethanol outcompetes methanol in the alcohol dehydrogenase step. Thus, acetaldehyde and later acetic acid are preferentially formed over formaldehyde and formic acid preventing the severe acidosis and retinal damage, seen with formaldehyde and formic acid toxicity. Ethylene glycol is another alcohol, which is used in antifreeze and actually gives antifreeze its sweet taste and odor. Again, it is also metabolized by alcohol dehydrogenase, but forms oxalic acid. Oxalic acid, of course, being an acid, can result in metabolic acidosis, and the acid itself can begin to crystallize in the urine, which results in damage in the kidney, or nephrotoxicity. Chronic alcohol use tends to make a person somewhat acidotic at baseline. Specifically, it gives them a slight lactic acidosis, and the reason for this is explained this way. The first and second step of ethanol metabolism actually requires NAD+. NAD+, is consumed in this reaction and is converted to NADH. The same thing happens here. NAD+, is consumed and produces NADH. Now recall from glycolysis in the TCA cycle that the end product of glycolysis is pyruvate. At that step, pyruvate can generally go in one of two ways. It can be converted to lactic acid, which is carried out by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, or it can be converted into acetyl-CoA, which can then enter the TCA cycle. The conversion of pyruvate to lactic acid is driven by the presence of NADH. This reaction, going toward lactic acid, actually consumes NADH, and produces NAD+. Thus you can see that when a person consumes large amounts of ethanol, that person is also making quite a bit of NADH. This NADH can then feed in at this step and actually drive the conversion of pyruvate into lactic acid, preventing it from entering the TCA cycle. This makes an alcoholic slightly acidotic, and it also means that our body's most efficient means of producing ATP from glucose, namely the TCA cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation later on, is being impaired. And this might explain why alcoholics are more vulnerable to metabolic derangements. They're just not producing ATP as well as they should be. NAD plus is also required for fatty acid oxidation in the liver. When fatty acids cannot be oxidized efficiently, this is thought to result in a fatty liver which is another effect of chronic alcoholism.